What's going on guys, Jeff here for Mad Hatter's Reef and today we're going to be taking a look at the top 10 ways you can save money with your reef tank. Hope everybody is having a fantastic day and if you're new to what we're doing here this is where I take a look at everything reef tank related. So if you love reef tanks like I do make sure you smash that subscribe button in the face. And today we're going to take a look at the top 10 ways you can save money with your reef tank. So let's jump into it. So starting off with number 10 on our top 10 ways you can save money for your reef tank and that is going to be sticking to the essentials on equipment. And these five items are the most essential items when it comes to the equipment that is needed to set up a reef tank. You need a heater. The tank needs to be heated. You have a protein skimmer to remove some of those nutrients from the water. Then you have lighting. Lighting is probably one of the most important features of a reef tank. Not only that, you have a return pump. Doesn't matter if you have an all-in-one system or a sump. You need to move that water one way or another and might as well finish off with a power head some type of power head something that's going to help move the water around these are all extremely essential pieces of equipment when it comes to keeping a reef tank some not so essential pieces of equipment when it comes to reef keeping is dosing pumps calcium reactors controllers automatic testers par meters these are all items that are extremely helpful and can make keeping a reef tank very easy, but they are not essential to setting up a reef tank. And a lot of people get wrapped up in these pieces of equipment and the costs associated with them, but they aren't the most basic pieces of equipment necessary to set up and maintain a successful reef tank. Coming in at number nine on our top 10 list is buying used equipment. Now, when I say buy used equipment, I definitely want to put out a word of caution with this. It is incredibly important to understand uh, fully the history behind your piece of equipment. And I would say probably the most easiest way to kind of sum this up is you don't really know what you're getting when you are buying a used equipment. I uh, just recently on the podcast, saltwateraquariumradio.com, I answered a question from a listener where they asked, is it okay or is it uh, recommended to buy a aquarium that was once used for a quarantine tank and use it as a display tank? Me personally, I'm never going to use any type of equipment that has ever been used in a quarantine system that has been treated with copper in my display tank because that could potentially cause some issues now that is the caution behind buying used equipment the benefit of buying used equipment is you can save a lot of money and get some really good stuff my 220 gallon tank that was a used tank that i bought that otherwise i probably at the time could not afford to purchase that tank and I did that through Facebook. Uh, it wasn't quite Marketplace yet. Marketplace has really stepped up its game. It's almost like the new uh, Craigslist. Craigslist is also a great place to pick up some used equipment. And also eBay. eBay is probably the best because you can really dive down and find that specific piece of equipment that you're looking for. And sometimes it's not even used. It's brand new stuff. The one thing with eBay and buying new equipment, I would stay away from the off-brand stuff. Uh, that usually is pretty low quality, uh, pretty uh, inefficient. And that was something that I got hung up in when I first started buying equipment on eBay uh, to kind of put my system together. But buying used equipment is a great way to save a ton of money. You just need to know what you're buying and who you're buying it from. Coming in at number eight on our top 10 ways you can save money for your reef tank is start small. Now, the Waterbox 70.3 for some people wouldn't be considered a small tank, but this is the smallest tank that I've had since my very first saltwater tank. And I'm excluding nano tanks when I say that. Now, the benefit associated with starting a smaller tank is the cost that is associated with it. Everything is less. To heat it, to light it, to fill it up with rock, to fill it up with sand, to fill it up with fish, corals, everything on every single level is less expensive. It would have took me years 
and years and years to fill up my 220 gallon. Like I have gone about filling up the water box and that really just comes down to the simple fact that it's less space. Coming in at number seven on our top 10 list is shopping at the dollar store. Now, shopping at the dollar store is a great way to save a ton of money in a number of different aspects of your life. Now, when it comes to reef keeping, there's items that are at the store that actually could be extremely beneficial to you and maintaining your reef tank. Jars, scrubby pads, measuring cups, turkey basters, super glue. All these items are very beneficial when it comes to maintaining a reef tank and can be used for a number of different aspects. And that's just a few things at the dollar store that could be used in relation to reef keeping. There's probably a hundred other things that you could do with the items that they have available and they're all cheap. Coming in at number six on our top 10 ways you can save money on your reef tank is taking dry rock and turning it into live rock. Now, live rock is extremely expensive and can definitely break the bank when you're setting up a reef tank. One of my personal favorite types of rock is real reef rock, and I it's a man-made rock that is dry most of the time when you purchase it. Uh, you can buy wet real reef rock from Premium Aquatics, which I did a video on that for them a while ago. But... The problem that is associated with dry rock is that it doesn't have all the life that live rock has. Live rock isn't rock that's living. It's rock that has life on it. There's beneficial bacteria. There's algaes. There's sponges. A bunch of different life. But with real live rock, there is that associated risk with hitchhikers that can really cause some substantial problems in reef keeping. And something I like to do usually with my dry rock is buy a bunch of it because it's about half the cost. Take it, put it in a barrel of salt water, have a heater, a power head, and add the items that I want with the live rock. If I want to have sponges, which sponges are an incredibly important part to a successful reef tank in my opinion, uh, the bacteria, the copepods, all these things individually so I am in complete control of the finished product with the live rock. I let it sit in the barrel for a couple of months and then once it's done cooking, I take it and I use it in my aquarium. And I have found that this has been a incredibly beneficial process to, to take dry rock and essentially make it into live rock. It takes a little bit of planning, a little bit of space and some added equipment, but it's going to save you a ton of money because the difference between dry rock and live rock is probably four to six dollars depending on where you're buying it from. Coming in at number five on the top ten ways you can save money with your reef tank is buying quality equipment. Now buying quality equipment it costs a little bit more, but when you buy equipment that has a higher quality, a little bit higher of a price tag, you're going to find that it lasts a lot longer. I've already made mention of this earlier in the video where I talked about uh, times where I bought stuff on eBay and didn't get the best quality product. And I also talked about sticking to the essentials on equipment. If you stick to the essentials and you buy good products and it doesn't need to be the best. It can be, you know, good. As long as it's good, it's going to serve you and your reef tank a lot better than if you are just buying, you know, a piece of equipment that's going to last maybe a year. And then it needs to be replaced. So if you spend a little bit more money up front, you're going to be a lot better for it. Coming in at number four on our top 10 ways you can save money with your reef tank is quarantining your livestock. Now, I'm talking about fish, I'm talking about corals, I'm talking about invertebrates. Most people don't quarantine invertebrates, but there is still value in that. Uh, there's definitely a tremendous amount of value in quarantining your corals because you can identify that there's something wrong with them before adding them to your display tank and possibly infecting all the corals with some type of parasite or hitchhiker that could potentially eat that coral or other corals that are in your tank and I have seen this happen I've had this happen I've also had this happen with fish I added a fish in the tank and they had ick on them and then all the fish eventually have ick and then die that is probably for me personally has been the biggest battle uh, and also the biggest waste of money 
uh, not quarantining fish, not quarantining corals properly before adding them to my display tank. And it doesn't really take a whole lot to set up a quarantine system. You actually can see right here, this is a fish quarantine tank. It has a heater, a filter, and a way to move the water, a couple places for them to hide, and that's it. That's all it takes. And in the grand scheme of things, preventing problems before they become really big problems is worth way more than anything else that you can do for your reef tank and the livestock inside it. Coming in at number three on our top 10 list is buying corals on eBay. Now, I have done quite a bit of this and almost kind of developed a little bit of uh, science behind it. Uh, there is a ton of value in buying corals on eBay. The one thing that I would probably stick to is staying with the well-known vendors on eBay just because I want to have that little extra uh, sense of service when it comes to buying stuff because uh, I'm sure there's people out there I haven't dealt with it in a very long time but I'm sure there's people out on eBay that are just trying to turn a buck and make uh, some quick money but there are some really good vendors that are on eBay that are doing sales each and every week and you can really save a tremendous amount of money buying coral at auction on eBay. The best deal that I ever got on eBay was I bought the Man of Steel. It was This was from Worldwide Corals. I bought the Man of Steel Tabling Acro, which typically sells for about $200, I think is the average asking price. And that's per frag. That's not for a small colony. I got this frag for $45. That's pretty good. That's more than 50% off right off the top and i ended up picking up some other corals as well uh, i think overall i spent about 200 bucks and got some really awesome corals from worldwide coral uh, they do listings every single week check them out uh, ebay is like i said great place to buy some corals and really get some awesome deals and save a ton of money coming in at number two in our top 10 ways you can save money with your reef tank is doing preventative maintenance preventative maintenance is one of the best ways to extend the life of your equipment you spend a lot of money on it we talked about buying you know the most essential pieces of equipment we talked about buying high quality equipment now it's time to take care of that equipment and if you take care of that equipment it's going to last a lot longer it's going to serve you better it's going to operate better and it's going to help you maintain your reef tank so if you take the time to clean it up all it takes is a little bit of vinegar, uh, some scrubbing, elbow grease. All these things are going to extend the life of your equipment. It's not always the best part of the hobby, but it's definitely an important part and something worth mentioning. And that's why it's number two on our top 10 ways you can save money with your reef tank. And coming in at number one on the top 10 ways you can save money with your reef tank is education there is a ton of content on youtube there's a ton of websites out there all that are based around the idea of educating people and helping them be successful with their reef tanks youtube's a great place to get content for free uh, reef to reef the forums are also a great place to get free information about reef keeping and there's a ton of websites as well there's uh, my website mad hat is reef i've been working on building that up there's also reef builders reef builders goes above and beyond with product spotlights and education behind it and then me loves reef me loves reef has definitely been one of the pillars of information when it comes to successful reef keeping and the best part about it is all of this stuff is for free so all it takes is a little bit of digging in and finding the information that you're looking for and educating yourself so you can make informed decisions about what you're doing with your corals with your fish with your reef tank so you can be successful so coming in at number one on our top 10 ways you can save money is education a lot of information out there for absolutely nothing make sure you check it out dig in and learn all right folks that's going to do it for today's video i want to thank you for joining me if you're new to the channel don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell so you can be notified every time that i upload a new video if you enjoyed this one make sure you hit the thumbs up and i'll see you next time right here with a brand new video